Uh, tonight, we're going to study chapter 18, just a little bit of chapter 17, but we're going to look at Babylon. And uh, we have come in chapter 18 to the end of this tribulation period. It's been a long journey, as uh, I told you that uh, the book of Revelation, so much of it deals with that. If you remember, chapter 1 was that uh, vision uh, of uh, Jesus, John had of Jesus, and he was told to write the things which are, shall be, and are to come. In chapter 2 and 3, we saw the seven churches. We saw the rapture up into heaven at the beginning of chapter 4 and 5. Beginning at 6, uh, those seven seals were opened. Uh, the first six seals in chapter 6. Uh, and then, and, and again, we've had the seven seals. We've had the seven trumpets. We've had the seven bowls. All the supplemental information about the Antichrist, the beast, the mark, uh, all of those things. And we come now to the end of chapter 18. Last week we looked at three different passages of Scripture. Uh, Daniel 2 with Nebuchadnezzar's dream, Daniel 7, the vision of those four beasts coming up, as well as the beginning of Revelation chapter 17. And all three of these visions all told us the same things. All of them dealt with world empires. And again, this is significant because the Scripture says in the end times will be the ultimate one world empire, not just the then known world, but the entire planet. We can see our world is coming together and becoming a smaller place. And this world kingdom that is going to exist in the future, we discovered last week, is going to come out of what used to be the Roman Empire, somewhere in Europe, more than likely. And it will consist of 10 nations or 10 kings or 10 regions aligned with the Antichrist. That is the future and final world kingdom. And we saw him uh, in chapter uh, 17 described as the beast. And there was this mystery Babylon writing him. Well, tonight we're going to talk about the fall of mystery Babylon. And to do our study on Babylon, uh, one of the things we have to do is we use this term mystery to set it apart from the other Babylons of, of in t antiquity, times past. Uh, it is the final Babylon, the Bible says describes and it is a mystery uh, no one can say for sure i mean people have their ideas and their opinions and we're not going to spend a lot of time speculating on whether it's a nation or a city or economic or world system or a church or something like that it is a mystery but let's look at what the bible says about this final babylon and its destruction which will come at the very end of the tribulation period now let's go back and look at the roots of Babel. The very first kingdom that ever existed was actually called Babel. And it's found in Genesis 11. You know the story. Most of us are familiar with the Tower of Babel, where God told uh, all of the population to scatter and fill the earth, but they found the land of Shinar. I like to say Shinar. And, and the word Shinar means beautiful place. The location of it was right in modern-day Iraq, where the Tigris and the Euphrates meet. Pretty much in this area was where the Tabor the Tower of Babel was built, and they said, let us build for ourselves a tower whose top reaches to heaven, and uh, let us make a name for ourselves. And every false religion has its roots in Babel, trying to build from the ground up to, to make it to heaven. Uh, every humanistic idea has a philosophy. Come, let us make ourselves a name because we as people are great and we can do great and mighty things. And that's when God scattered them. But what a lot of people don't recognize is that Babel was not just a tower. It was a kingdom. In fact, the very first time the word kingdom is used in scripture is found in Genesis 10, where the Bible speaks of Nimrod, who was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Three times in Scripture we're told about this guy Nimrod, who was a mighty hunter before the Lord. And most Bible scholars believe that that doesn't mean that he hunted deer and elk, but he hunted men. He was brutal, he was fierce, he was violent, he was a murderer. And the beginning of his, what's that word? Kingdom was Babel. And so the first kingdom that existed on the face of the earth as far as uh, human kingdoms was the kingdom of Babel in the book of Genesis, which God brought to an end when he confused their language and scattered them over the face of the earth. That was the first Babylon. Then we come to the second Babylon or the middle Babylon that took place in the time of Daniel. 
And that Babylonia empire existed all through this whole region, spreading from the Red Sea, the Persian Gulf, the Caspian Sea, the Mediterranean, covering uh, most of the, the, the world at that time. Uh, Daniel chapter 1 tells us that that Babylonian kingdom also had a person ruling it, a ruthless man by the name of Nebuchadnezzar. And the Bible says concerning Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel 5.19 that whoever he wanted to kill, he would kill. And whoever he wanted to keep alive, he would keep alive. He had ultimate and supreme power. And Nimrod from the first Babel was a picture or a type of the Antichrist in the end. Nebuchadnezzar the same way. World ruler, a picture, a type of the Antichrist. The kingdom of Babylonia had at its center... Babylon, the city, the great city, located about the same place where the Tower of Babel was built. Interestingly enough, uh, Babylon, the city, was one of the, what is it, the seven, the hanging gardens of Babylon were one of the seven wonders of the world. In addition to that, the city of Babylon was so powerful, majestic, the Greek historian Her Herodotus uh, wrote that the walls of Babylon were so thick, about 87 feet thick, I can't imagine that, that they would have chariot races on top of the walls where horses and chariots would run side by side around the top of the walls. It was an impenetrable, huge city, but judgment of God came upon that city uh, in Jeremiah 51. So again, we have the middle kingdom of Babel, Babylon, and then what we discovered last week in the book of Revelation is there is a final Babylon. And we're, gonna, we're, we're just going to review some of the things that we've already read. But this final kingdom, this final uh, whatever it is, we're not sure, it's a mystery, is uh, recorded for us many times in the book of Revelation called Babylon the Great. We can go back to chapter 14 and verse 8, the first time Revelation mentions it, on those seven visions that John had, where an angel cried out and said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. By the way, this double fallen it happens in chapter 18, verse 2, as well as in the book of Isaiah. So three times the scripture says Babylon has fallen, fallen. What does that mean? Well, some think it means it's referring to the fall of Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon, as well as this final mystery Babylon. Some think that when mystery Babylon falls, it will fall in two stages, but it is going to fall. Notice that Babylon the Great is described as the woman, she, who makes all the nations of the dr world drink of the wine of the passion of her immorality. That phrase is going to be used several times in the book of Revelation. Also in chapter 16 and verse 9, you recall that uh, at the final bowl, remember there are seven seals, seven trumpets, seven bowls, and the scripture says that in those final bowls the wrath of god is done well the very last bowl is the seventh bowl and when that seventh bowl of wrath happens the scripture says babylon the great was remembered before god and he gave her the cup of the wine of his fierce wrath so again the judgment of god is coming upon this mystery babylon at the very end the seventh and final bowl we're introduced to babylon as uh, she's described as a harlot uh, who sits on many waters, is described as riding the beast, the Antichrist, in Revelation chapter 17. And when we speak of a harlot, again, this is, this is not just a single person, a woman here. Uh, some people want to make it the Roman Catholic Church or something like that. Uh, but I think this harlotry is similar to what the Scripture describes in Exodus 34, in Hosea chapter 1, where spiritually a people uh, who should be committed to God uh, adulterate themselves for money, so to speak, to go after other lovers. And that's what God said concerning his people Israel. You've, you've committed harlotry, prostitution, by going after other lovers who are paying you uh, for, for, for things that you should be sticking with uh, your relationship with me. Again, chapter 17 speaks of the fact that this mystery Babylon has influence over the kings of the earth, the rulers of the earth. Uh, she commits acts of immorality, has them drunk with the wine of her immorality. We already uh, studied chapter 17, verse 5, that this woman has on her head, uh, forehead, a name, Babylon the Great. It's a mystery. Mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And we also read last time in verse 6 
that uh, this woman was drunk with the blood of the saints and the blood of the witnesses of Jesus. So again, this woman is involved. Again, I'm not, it's, not a, it's not an actual woman. You got, you got that with me. I'll tell you in a moment what the scripture says it is. But she is persecuting and killing the Christians during the tribulation period. Unequal bloodshed, violence, all of those things. Now, that's where we left off last week. Let's pick up now in Revelation chapter 17, beginning in verse 15, and look at what the Scripture says concerning Mystery Babylon. Uh, the angel said to me that the waters on which you saw the harlot sits, remember back in verse 1, the woman sits on many waters, those waters are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. What does that mean? That again, this mystery Babylon has influence over the nations of the earth. Verse 16, this is a key verse, don't miss this. And the scripture says that the ten horns which you saw and the beast. Now, let's stop and pause. What are the ten horns? Those are the ten kings. Those are the ten toes of Daniel's statue. These are the ten rulers of the final time and the Antichrist. Okay, So the ten horns and the Antichrist will hate the harlot. Now, it's interesting because at the beginning of this chapter, the woman was riding the beast. So it seems like the Antichrist and Mystery Babylon had some type of relationship. Maybe she was even riding him. And then he came to the top and he and those ten nations will destroy Babylon and they will burn her with fire. Why would they do that? Well, because God has put it in their hearts to fulfill the purpose. Okay, God is going to use the Antichrist and the ten kings to burn her, to bring judgment. And again, perhaps as, uh, as the Antichrist grows in power, he basically wants that power. He wants, uh, she has power over nations, multitudes, people's tongue. He wants it for himself. There's only room for one sheriff in this town, and God is going to use the Antichrist and the ten nations to kill or destroy this woman. Now, the last verse of chapter 17 tells us something significant. The woman that you saw is what? The great, what is that word? City, which reigns over the kings of the earth. Now, it's interesting because a lot of people uh, want to make Mystery Babylon uh, a nation. For example, some people think it's America. Uh, America is a nation, has idolatry, sits on many waters, one of the biggest influences in the world and culture. The kings of the earth could be drunk with their fornication. English is taught all over the world. Uh, this, this mystery Babylon is going to make people rich. America has done that. But here's the thing. If we stick with Scripture, the Scripture doesn't say that the woman, mystery Babylon, is a nation. What, is the, what does it say? It says that the mystery Babylon is a great city. Here's another thing. It doesn't just happen once in the book of Revelation. It happens one, two, three, four, five, six times. Six times we're going to read tonight that Mystery Babylon is a city, not a nation. Okay? Now, could it be New York City? I suppose it could. Uh, a lot of people believe that Babylon will be rebuilt in the same location that the first Babel and the second Babylon was that the city of Babylon will be rebuilt. Again, I'm not going to speculate on where or what it is specifically, only to say that the Scripture says it's a city. And this city is going to, to be this ultimate place of wealth and sin and corruption, and everyone's going to uh, be excited about this. But the city itself will be destroyed instantly. In one hour, in one day, again, three times we talk about immediate destruction as well as the Scripture saying burned with fire four times. So again, I think if something appears in the Bible once, that's good enough for me. But when we see six times Babylon is called a city, three times it's going to be destroyed quickly, and four times it's going to be destroyed with fire, then I think Mystery Babylon is going to be some city that will be destroyed with fire very quickly. Um, let's go ahead and just read through chapter 18, and then I'll make some uh, references as we go, and we'll kind of wrap it up towards the end. Chapter 18, verse 1, read with me. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven with great authority, 
and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried out with a mighty voice, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. Again, Isaiah 21, 9 says that, fallen, fallen. Now, don't forget this because we're going to come back to it. She, Babylon the great, has become a dwelling place of what? Demons. And a what? Prison of every unclean spirit. And a what? Prison of every unclean and hateful bird. In other words, there's a whole lot of demonic activity and infestation going on in this city. But I think there could be another application that we'll talk about at the end tonight. Uh, verse 3 says, For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the passion of her immorality, and the kings of the earth have committed acts of immorality with her. That's like the third time we've read that. And the merchants of the earth, businessmen, okay, have become rich by the wealth of her sensuality. Back in chapter uh, 17, the word luxurious was, was used concerning her. This, this uh, mystery Babylon is going to have wealth and money and make people rich. Uh, this is all about money. Verse 4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, and this is where it speaks to you and me as Christians, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not participate in her sins and receive of her plagues uh, does this mean that if you find yourself living in this city you need to move out no but there's a clear warning for you and i as a church to be separate from the things that mystery babylon represents and notice it says concerning her plagues and her sins verse 5 for her sins have piled up what as high as heaven God has remembered her iniquities. You know what's interesting is when the very first Babel was built, it said, come let us build a tower whose top will reach to heaven. Now the final Babylon, the top doesn't reach to heaven, but her sins have made it all the way to heaven, just piled on top of one another to build a tower of sin, shall we say, that's reached the top. And God is going to pay her back double. Verse 6, pay her back even as she has been paid, give her back her double according to her deeds in the cup uh, which she has mixed mix twice as much for her to the degree that she has glorified herself and lives sensually to the same degree give her torment and warning for she says in her heart i sit as a queen and not a widow and i will never see mourning for this reason in one day in other words the idea Suddenly, in one day, her plagues will come. Pestilence, mourning, famine, and she will be burned up with fire. For the Lord God who judges her is strong. Now, in these uh, final next 10 verses or so, we're going to see the disappointment concerning this city. That it's, it's kind of like uh, the whole world has put their hopes you know I, I almost picture in america the stock market crash of 1929 but something grander than that that everybody has put their hopes in this humanistic uh babylon the great that's gonna just be the you know the next best thing for everybody in the whole world and it's all gonna die and three groups of people the monarchs the merchants and the mariners if you want to alliterate them with m's the kings the businessmen and the seafarers we'll see them it's very easy to see uh, because they all say alas alas or whoa whoa they're they're grieving over the loss of it let's look at it verse 10 uh, excuse me verse 9 and the kings of the earth who committed acts of immorality with her they will weep and lament over her when they see the smoke of her burning standing at a distance because of the fear of her torment okay we're going to stand back and watch her burn kind of like they did at sodom and gomorrah where uh it says in in genesis 19 they woke up the next morning i think 19 verse 27 and 28 sodom was continually burning and people are standing back watching when mystery babylon is judged by god people will stand back the kings of the earth and they will say in verse 10 standing at a distance because of the fear of her torment alas alas or whoa whoa that great city babylon the strong city for in one hour your judgment has come so the rulers of the world can't believe it the kings of the earth they weep over her and verse 11 the merchants of the earth the businessmen all the people on wall street or whatever who have made themselves rich with her 
uh, they weep and mourn over her because no one buys her cargo anymore. And the next two verses just gives, give us a list. Gold, silver, stones, pearls, silk, scarlet, wood, ivory, uh, iron, marble, cinnamon, spice, incense, perfume, olive oils, wheat, cattle, sheep, cargoes, horses, chariots, even slaves and human lives. I don't know if this means people sold their soul to the devil or even more so if people were uh, human trafficking was going on in this city. You know, whatever it might be, uh, all of these things that people got rich on. It says in verse 14, the fruit you long for has gone from you. All the things that were luxurious and splendid have passed away from you. Men will no longer find them. And the merchants of these things, again, he's the businessman who became rich from her, will stand at a distance. There we go. we got to stand back. Don't want to get too close to the burning here. And because of the fear of her torment, weeping and mourning, saying, Woe, woe, alas, alas, the great city who is clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet, adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour, once again, suddenly... Just like that, for in one hour, sorry I'm behind on the slides here, uh, for in one hour such great wealth has been laid waste. Now we get to the third group, the seafarers, the, the mariners. Uh, every shipmaster, every passenger, every sailor, as many as make their living by the sea, stood at a distance once again, standing back, don't get too close, and they were crying out as they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like the great city? And they threw dust on their heads, and they're crying and weeping and mourning, saying, Alas, alas, woe, woe, the great city in which all the ships at sea became rich by her wealth. In one hour she has been laid to waste." Guys, there's a pretty important message here that when God brings judgment on this mystery Babylon, everyone has put all their eggs in one basket and it's gone. You know, the current crisis has a real way of challenging us. What are we living for? What's our hope in? If your hope is in Jesus Christ, nothing has changed in the last five months. But if your hope is in the world and in all the nice things that we can get and you know yes i want those things too i'm hoping the world goes back to normal whatever normal is but normal is still not perfect it's not god's kingdom mankind cannot rule itself the world is under the curse of sin the whole point of the tribulation is that god is dealing with his people israel and bringing judgment upon an unbelieving world and he's going to establish an everlasting kingdom and Jesus has saved us from our sins. He saved us from death. He saved us from the world in which we live. We have an eternal hope that goes beyond the grave. This is real. This is not science fiction or fantasy or some pie in the sky. Uh, what we believe is real is really real. And that needs to be our hope. We cannot put our hope in the things of the world because in one hour, it can all be lost. Let's look at verse 20. Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you saints and apostles and prophets. Hallelujah. Why? Because the mystery Babylon's been judged. God has pronounced judgment for you against her. This is a key verse, verse 21. Then a strong angel took a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, into the ocean. When you throw a millstone into the sea, what happens? It sinks. Just as it sinks, it says, so will Babylon, the great city, be thrown down with violence and it will not be found any longer and once again uh, a, a lament kind of a, a eulogy shall we say is given in these next couple verses the sound of the harpists and the musician and flute players and trumpets will not be heard in you babylon any longer no craftsman of any craft will be found in you any longer the sound of a mill will not be heard in you any longer the light of a lamp will not shine in you any longer the voice of the bride and the bridegroom will not hear uh, will not be in you any longer your merchants your great men of the earth why because all the nations were deceived by your sorcery in other words no more music no more manufacturing no more paychecks no more factories no more contracts no more 
marriage. No more of all the hopes that people have put their life into. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is what? Sinking sand. You know, we're, we're painting the deck of a sinking ship when you talk about this world. It's all going to burn. Let's just put it that way, okay? So notice also he says at the end of this, all the nations were deceived by your sorcery. I've told you before that that Greek word for sorcery, pharmakia, sounds like what? Pharmacy, drugs. That again, mystery Babylon, not only is there drunkenness, but probably drugs, demonic activity going on in that city. The final verse tonight, and in her was found the blood of the prophets and saints and all who have been slain on the earth. So again, violence, murdering, bloodshed, all those things happening in Mystery Babylon. Now, I've read this whole chapter for you tonight, and you're probably sitting there saying, Pastor, you didn't answer any of my questions. Well, sure I did. We want specific details, but we aren't going to get them because it is a mystery. But what we can know is that there is going to be this future city, it appears, that all the kings of the earth, all the businessmen of the world have put their hopes in. And it is a, an abomination to God that has brought evil on the whole earth. And at the very end, God's going to take it down. Just like the first kingdom of Babel, just like Babylon in the middle of history, the final Babylon, uh, mystery Babylon, the great harlot, will be taken down. Let me close with three things tonight, three thoughts that I want to give you. And uh, two of these are possible speculation. I'm not going to say for sure, but uh, it's interesting. First of all, it was prophesied in the Old Testament that when Babylon is destroyed, it will happen like Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, for those of you who know your Bible, Sodom and Gomorrah took place in Genesis chapter 19. When Lot and his wife lived in Sodom and Gomorrah, you remember the angels came there to destroy the city and had to literally pull Lot and his daughters out. And the Lord hailed uh, fire and brimstone upon that city uh, because of its great evil and destruction. And let me read to you Isaiah 13, 19 says, Babylon, the beauty of kingdoms, the glory of the Chaldean pride will be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. The scripture says the same thing, not only in Isaiah 13, but also in Jeremiah 50. Now, could that have referred to the fall of the first, uh, the second Babel, the Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon? Sure it could. But we, when looking back in history, we didn't see anything necessarily that was directly related to the first fall. Now here's uh, the, the fall of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Here's what we know about Sodom and Gomorrah. That going back to Genesis when uh, the uh, king of Sodom and, and Gomorrah were there, the scripture tells us that entire area was full of tar pits, oil, okay? And that the Lord in Genesis 19.24 rained fire and brimstone upon Sodom and Gomorrah. And as Sodom and Gomorrah burned, the entire uh, region there, the city, everything, caught fire with all those tar pits and burned and burned and burned and burned and began to sink down. Do you know, today, uh, almost every, you know, Bible archaeologist or historian, even, even a historian from, from Israel, say, where are the remains of Sodom and Gomorrah today? Almost everybody believes they're at the bottom of the Dead Sea. Did you know that the Dead Sea is the lowest place on earth the lowest place that you can stand is on the shore of the dead sea it sunk down the dead sea i think the dead sea was created by sodom and gomorrah sinking down burning sink 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 burn 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 sink and then finally the water the salt sea you know was it uh lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt there's all kinds of salt around there at the dead sea anyway this 416, this is an actual picture. You can look it up, the lowest place on earth. That's 416 meters. About 13, 1400 feet below sea level is where the shore of the Dead Sea is. Uh, what is my point? That 
Jeremiah 51 says concerning Babylon that Babylon will sink down and shall not rise again. Now, let me make one more connection to the final Babylon. This is Jesus now speaking in Luke chapter 17. And here's what Jesus says. He says, Just as in the days of Lot they were eating and drinking, selling, planting, building, but on the day Lot went out from Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be just the same on the day the Son of Man is revealed. Wow, if we take that literally, there's going to be fire and brimstone and a destruction on the day the Son of Man is revealed, on the coming of Christ, the apocalypse, the unveiling, when Jesus comes and every eye shall see him. At the end of the tribulation, when that seventh pole happens, there will be a sinking down again of Babylon. It will be destroyed with fire and brimstone just the same way Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. We read it tonight. In one hour, it's going to happen. Now, what does this mean? Here's the second part. This is pure speculation. You don't have to agree. But it's possible that Babylon itself, this mystery Babylon, will become the location of the lake of fire. Perhaps a future hell, if I could use that word that she will sink and become that way. Now, we're going back now to Revelation 18.21 that we read tonight where the angel took a stone and threw it in the sea and it sank down and it said, hey, Babylon will also sink down. Can you imagine? I'm just speculating here. In fact, you know, we talk about a rapture where you're alive and you're caught right up into heaven. There's actually a reverse rapture uh, shall where the ground opened up and people went down into Hades. I believe that's in Exodus 32, I think, uh, where it happened at the law, the Levites, those who, I think 3,000 people died, the ground opened up. My point, what if Babylon, when God takes this great city of Babylon and fire and brimstone and all this stuff, burn, burn, fire, sink, 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 and it just kind of opens up into into a pit of, of a lake of fire where, where according to 18.2, Babylon has become the dwelling place of every demon and every unclean spirit. You see, hell, according to Matthew 25.41, was created for the devil and his angels. That is the intent and the purpose of it. So again, there could be a connection. It's all speculation. I'm not trying to build a whole doctrine. But what we're going to see next week in Revelation 19 is that when Babylon burns... The uh, scene in heaven is hallelujah. The smoke of Babylon's torment goes up forever and ever. The smoke rises up forever and ever. So it almost appears like the scripture says that Babylon's going to burn forever and ever. There seems to be some connection there with the lake of fire, with hell, with this mystery Babylon that God is judging. My final words tonight, final thing I want to say. Uh, is simply this, that you and I are commanded, we are called to separate her back in Revelation 18, verse 4. Come out of her, my people. Now again, I don't think this is just a literal city. Oh, we need to run away from the city of Babylon or a nation. I know people who think, oh no, America is mystery Babylon. We need to move out of America because, you know, uh, we need to come out of her, my people. That is not the heart of the spirit that I see in Scripture. Come out of her, it says in Revelation, so that you don't commit her sins. What are the sins we've read tonight of Mystery Babylon? I could probably sum up most of those sins in four things. Sexual immorality. She is described as being a woman who is prostitute, immoral, the kings of the earth, playing the harlot, all those things. There's money riches, luxurious, greed, all those things are associated with wealth and money. Money's not evil, but the love of money is a root of all sorts of evil. Drugs and alcohol, we saw sorceries tonight, and drunkenness, making the kings of the earth drunk, and anger and violence, the bloodshed of the saints. Guys, do you want to know what is fascinating to me is that pretty much everything the world has to offer, everything the flesh inside of us 
can be tempted to run to apart from Christ is summed up in these four things. I want to read to you as we close tonight, Galatians 5. You know Galatians 5, 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That's what God wants us to be. But right before that, God lists something called the deeds of the flesh. And do you know, this is an exact list of the deeds of the flesh. Immorality, impurity, sensuality, carousing. Immorality, impurity, sensuality, sensuality, and carousing. Pretty much sexual immorality. Also on that list, envying, envying, and idolatry. The Bible says covetousness is idolatry, the things that we want, envying and idolatry. On that list in, in uh, Galatians 5, sorcery and drunkenness. Sorcery and drunkenness. And then also on that list, enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions. All associated with anger and violence. What's my point? You can sum up the lust of the flesh, the deeds of the flesh. Sex, money, drunken alcohol, uh, uh, drugs, and anger. And that's exactly what is represented in that final world system. All that the world has to offer. All that the flesh wants apart from Christ. And God says that you and I are to come out of her. We are called to separate ourselves. And Christian, I want to challenge you. At this time, what is it that you're living for? If you really could have all the sex you wanted, all the money you wanted, get drunk and high all the time and just let your flesh go off on people that is not what God's called us to be. He's called us to live separate. We studied this last week when we look at Ananias and Sapphira, that our God is holy and that he wants us to come out of this. There's a choice to be made in the world in which we live, whether we're going to live for Christ for eternity or whether we're going to live for the temporary pleasures of this world. Well, that's all we got time for tonight. Revelation chapter 18 is done. Uh, next week, you get to read chapter 19, and we're going to see the coming of Jesus Christ returning to this earth. Do you know Revelation 19 has the distinction of being the only place in the Bible where the word hallelujah shows up? It shows up four times in the first six verses. Uh, that's a word we use all the time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, only shows up right here in the first few parts of chapter 19. We're going to see the marriage supper of the Lamb and the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. So study 19, and we'll pick it up next Wednesday night. Let me close in prayer. Thank you, God, again for uh, this study tonight, your great word that speaks to us concerning things that we don't fully understand, but we understand enough to know that, God, you are going to judge the evil and the wickedness of this world. And we pray that our hearts would be set apart, Lord, that we would take the admonishment to come out and not allow ourselves to, to live uh, one foot in the world and one foot in the church, to not allow ourselves to be double-minded. Uh, but God, let us have complete hearts devoted to you uh, that we might bring glory and honor to you. Uh, Father, thank you again for the hope that we have in Christ. Bless everyone who's participated in this study. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. See you Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Thanks for joining us tonight. God bless you.